We all know that 80% of the results that we desire come from 20% of the work that we do. So that is why I decided to focus my efforts when it comes to AI on that 20% that drives 80% of the results. And for me, the main thing that I'm focused right now on is content. And I'm not looking for AI to replace me. I'm only looking for it to amplify my efforts and the goals that I have. And if I'm being honest, I really only started this because these were real problems that I'm having, but I'm not only limited to only the content creation industry. But honestly, this is where I'm starting. And the products that I'm building, the products that I've built so far would not have been possible without AI. And it comes from the same principle that 80% of the results that we want come from 20% of the work that we do. So I literally only focus on that. And when it comes to content creation, when it comes to YouTube in particular, the 20% that I'm focused on that I feel like anybody should be focused on that drives most of the results is the title, the thumbnail, and the idea. Those are the most important aspects when it comes to creating YouTube videos. So how did I work around that or how did I use AI to build those workflows? Well, for one, I started with titles. Titles are gonna be either the first or second thing people see when they watch a YouTube video. So what I decided to do was take a list of outliers throughout YouTube and titles that I actually like and build a title bank around it because I've learned that you do not have to reinvent the wheel. So I've taken proven formulas that already work and apply it to things that I actually wanna talk about. So the good thing about YouTube is that it shows its hand every now and then by giving you these outlier videos. And outlier videos are essentially just videos that perform higher than a channel's average. So my average is 10,000 views a video, an outlier will be 20,000 or outlier will be 100,000 views on that video. Those are the videos that I copy. And when I say copy, I mean copy the title framework. So those titles I put in a title bank, I categorize it for later use, and I wait until I have a real idea so I can use those titles as a reference. So I can talk about what I wanna talk about, but also use those proven frameworks that already work. That's the first one. So I already know out the bat that I'm gonna have at least a good title because I'm using A, proven frameworks that actually work, and B, I'm talking about things that I actually wanna talk about. Again, I am not reinventing the wheel. The second thing I built is surrounding ideas and how can we generate more ideas that actually make sense and that actually work. And for me, this came pretty easy. So essentially what I do is I get an AI agent and they go through my YouTube studio and they go through the section in the audience that says what your audience also watches. Because this is real feedback that YouTube is giving me. They're literally telling me what my audience already watches. So what this agent does is it goes through every single video and it downloads all the comments from all 15 videos that YouTube provides me every single week. And with this information, it's probably gonna produce 15, 20,000 different comments that I can go through. Now, I'm not going through 20,000 comments. I'm just gonna be honest, I'm not going through that many comments. So after it extracts all the comments from videos that my audience already watches, AI automatically processes all the different comments and filters down the list so I can only see the comments that they believe that will make good YouTube videos. Literally, that's it. It is a very simple process and it's not something that I use frequently, but on days when I have a drought or when I don't know what to record or when I'm having a little bit of confusion or when I'm lost and what I need to create, I literally just go through this because these are real ideas from audiences that already watch my content. That is the key. Give me videos that my audience already watches. Literally, I'm not reinventing the wheel. I'm not going in chat GBT and saying, give me content ideas based on this. I'm getting real feedback from real things that actually matter. I'm not telling ChatGPT or Claude to give me ideas based on what they believe. I'm asking them to give me a list based on the comments that they already processed. I'm not asking them to do anything fancy, but just shorten down the list from 20,000 comments to maybe a good 100, 200, 300 comments that actually matter. Again, AI is not here to replace my creativity. AI is not here to replace me as a creator. AI is here to help and leverage my efforts as a creator. That is it. I'm not asking ChatGPT to generate any titles for me because ChatGPT just, just doesn't have that same creativity as a human has. I'm not asking AI to generate content ideas for me because their limitations are only based on the database that they were trained on. So I don't want that. I want them to have real information that I've provided them so that I can help AI do a better job at assisting me. That is it. So we got titles being automated by AI by giving me proven frameworks that already work that I manually enter. And we also have AI going through comments from videos that my audience already watches and pulling those comments to give me more ideas to work with. We also have thumbnails. Now I'm not gonna lie to you, thumbnails for me is looking a little bit rough right now. It's looking a little bit rough. And my process is a bit rough right now, so I'm not the best when it comes to thumbnails, but I can tell you that AI has also helped me create better thumbnails. And my workflow for that is very simple. I provide my video to AI and AI literally goes through frame by frame each section of my video. So literally every second of my video, AI analyzes and processes and it ranks it based on a couple different factors. 
The first one being blurriness and how sharp the image actually is. And I also source it by facial expression that I'm making in the video. So whether I'm happy, sad, mad, angry, it sorts it. And when I'm doing things like vlogs, it also sorts it by best composition so that I can take screenshots of those and put those on Instagram as well if I wanted to or use those for the thumbnails in the actual video. The reason I do this is because I don't wanna to have to go through every single video to mainly take screenshots of things throughout my vlog to put in the video, or just me talking to the camera if I'm just using uh, talking head footage. I believe that AI can do a better job at doing it and do it a lot faster if I give it the right instructions on how to do it. And that is something that I also automated because I've learned that it can literally process data a lot faster than I can, and it can give me a wider range of different photos that I can use that's not just generated or ignore because it's literally only this. It's only taking screenshots of the actual video, but it's basically no screenshots of sharpness and by motion and by composition if I'm using it for vlogs. That is literally another way that saved me thousands of hours of having to go through footage manually and it's been a game changer. The last thing I used it, it doesn't really follow under that 80-20 rule as far as 20% of the action that you do drive 80% of the results, but it is one that I believe is very, very beneficial, especially for editing videos. And how this workflow works is I provide AI a clean slate of my footage and it basically marks up every part of my video that needs placeholders. And what I mean by that is it marks spots that can be potential B-roll, it marks spots that can be potential like text overlays, it marks spots that can be potential text pop-ups or motion graphics. It literally marks all these different spots so that me as an editor, I can literally go through it, scroll through it and figure out what works and what doesn't. So it's making my workflow as an editor faster because it's literally giving me suggestions and ideas and I can also add on top of that so that it makes my workflow a lot easier and again it is not replacing me as an editor it is not placing me as a creative it is literally only giving me suggestions based on my footage itself so if it tells me hey right here would be a good place to put b-roll I might not have even thought of that but you know looking back at it it might have been a great place to put some b-roll footage at and I probably would have never thought of it if it hadn't provided it for me and the reason why I find it so important I, the reason why I find it so game-changing because it makes the thought process a lot easy so I can now focus on more creative tasks and how can I enhance it even more because something like creating different text pop-ups can be repetitive but if I have a clean template on where things should go I can literally just modify it from there and why I am still doing the work as far as creating the different motion graphics or creating the different text pop-ups and, and b-roll shots I want that because those are still human things that I want to do and I'm not ready for AI to replace that just yet because those are things that make the video pop and those are different things that separates you as a creator so still having access to change all these and still adding it manually makes it a lot easier rather than having AI do everything for you. It's kind of taking away that little creativity. I would rather just give me suggestions, which is why I built it that way. But I'm just telling you like, the thing that you can do with AI is unbelievable. And in my opinion, I'm only getting started because these are real problems that I'm having right now as a content creator. I'm not only limited to content creation. I can really apply these same principles and apply it to any industry. But that's the beauty of AI. Like you can literally do anything you want. Like the only limitation is your own mind. And that's why I always say that creativity is gonna be key. Creativity is gonna be the thing that changes everything. And creativity is gonna be the thing that, that rises to the top. Because literally, there are no more limitations. Your only limitation is your own imagination. That's why I love this so much. And I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. One of these products that I mentioned caught your interest in some way. And although I did make these products for me, I am opening a beta version so that other people can start using it. So if you have any interest in using any of the products that I mentioned, the link is in the bio, and I'll see if I can add you to the beta. With that being said, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.